Hey guys, this is Dino Jalusic. You guys are watching Sonic Perspectives. Hello everyone and welcome to another interview of Sonic Perspectives. I'm Rodrigo and my guest today is the vocal powerhouse Dino Jalusic. Dino, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, man. It's my pleasure. Yeah. We're here to promote your first solo album, Follow the Blind Man. Uh, tell me about the decision to record an album under your own name. I mean, to me, that's independence and freedom, but also big responsibility, right? It's not my solo album. That's the first thing. Jalusic is a band. It's four oh, okay. of us. Okay. It's, it's like Van Halen. It's like Van Halen and Bon Jovi and all, all those bands. It's not, right. it's not my solo record, so it's not that big of a responsibility as you think. Okay. But I'll be doing this in the future. But Jalusic is a band itself, and uh, yeah, good stuff. It's great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great, and uh, really enjoyed creating this album with those guys, and it turned out great. And I'm really happy it's out finally. So yeah, yeah. So I can well, say, yeah, what I like about it is there's a lot of variety in it. Some high octane songs like Animal Inside, for example, but there's some breathing space, like the title track, for example. I mean, did you guys think about that when you were writing or when you were sequencing the songs on the album or? Well, I was, I was thinking about that. If, if you would ask any other guy in the band, it would be just, just heavy stuff. And I said, <laughs> guys, we, we need to grow up finally. We need to give people something more. So we had three ballads, Fold the Blind and The Great Divide, The Bitter End, and all three are different. The Bitter End is more kind of, um, just piano, vocals, and a little orchestra, yeah. uh, which is a nice ending song. The Great Divide, I actually almost cut that song from the record. And then guitar player said, no way, that's a hit song, <laughs> which is crazy because I'm the ballad guy in the band, right. and he's like the heaviest guy. He listens to Slipknot right. and Pantera and Meshuga. <laughs> and he said, there's no way, this song is amazing. It's a hit song. It's when I first heard it, I knew it was going to be a hit song. We, you got to keep the song. Yeah. And I said, fine. So then we, we recorded the song and I listened to the whole record and I thought, wow, I, I thought about cutting that song from the record. Now I'm listening to it and, and, and it and it touches me. You know, I can relate to it. So if people can relate to it as well, it's a bingo. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and then you have Follow the Blind Man, which is a title track, more epic sounding kind of song. Mm -hmm. uh, more in vein of, let's say, um, Queen, and um, I don't know. It just I can't really compare it to anything else. Like, yeah, it's just a, an epic song with a lot of changes. Um, it's kind of ballady, but it's powerful. It has an orchestra, it has a great guitar solo, and it's it's just different. Um, yeah. So you know, we even had a southern song, kind of bluesy, and one funk song. But I thought it would be too much. So I cut right. those two and I, I, I put Keeler and Acid Rain because we were missing another up-tempo song. And, uh, but we're going to work out those two for the next one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, and the title track has a line that I love. It's what doesn't kill you makes you miserable. Uh, does that come from a personal experience of yours or something like that or something you can relate to? Well, you know how they say what doesn't kill you makes you, makes you stronger. Yeah. But when you, when you think about it, I mean, what doesn't kill you kind of leaves you miserable and, and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and wounded, you know. And yeah. over the past couple of years, I had a couple of situations where I felt like, oh, my God, this is it. Like, uh, you know, um, regarding uh, like a court case with Frontiers or uh, past relationships, I was like, this is it. I'm done. Yeah. I feel miserable and awful. Like this didn't kill me. I'm still alive, but I'm 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 just so done. Yeah. Now I feel like I am stronger, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But but there was a lot of misery included. So back then I just didn't see any light. So yeah, it was written and I just felt yeah. like I need to pour it out in that song. So yeah, yeah, I love that song. Yeah, I, I know a few details about this uh, Frontiers thing and, uh, you know, feel free not to talk about it. I'm glad you, yeah. you went past that hill and you're in a different place in your career right now. So that's good. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I wish Frontiers all the luck with their future projects. I'm just going to go my way and that's it. 
Awesome, awesome. And well, usually people choose the single or the quickest track on the album as the name. Uh, but this time you chose a ballad, Follow the Blind Man. What was behind that choice? I mean, it's definitely one of the strongest ones on the album, for sure. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when I first wrote that song, I'll never forget that I, it was in this room and I played it to my ex-drummer, just me and piano, and I sang. And he said, Jesus Christ, what a song. He said, this is, he said, I have goosebumps. And I said, this is going to be on the next album. <laughs> And I said, I think it's going to be called Follow the Blind Man. And I think we should call the album Follow the Blind Man because that's the strong, it has a strong meaning. Yeah. And uh, I I picture an album cover and everything came out perfectly in my head. The album cover, the Blind Man, the misery, um, the bitterness and the beauty of music in that song. And mm -hmm. uh, I will, that's the only song title I would choose out of all these song titles. To like like for the album so yeah. right yeah and you mentioned the cover i mean i have it here in my background the cover is awesome in my opinion and i i don't know about you but to me it looks like robert plant looks these days is, was that intentional or do you think that way as well or it looks like robert plant yeah <laughs> i feel that way uh, oh man I, I actually i was actually playing with robert plant two weeks ago I know. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Yeah. He, he doesn't look like this cover. I'll tell you that. Okay. He looks. Okay. He looks fine. <laughs> okay. And he sound and he sounds great. And he's a great, great guy. And um, I think we're going to do something. I'm going to perform with him again in March. Oh wow! And What's the event? So this is. It's an interesting story. It's a cancer hmm. found event, ran by Andy Taylor from Duran Duran. I'm also okay. a fan of Duran Duran. Mm -hmm. I happen to work with all my favorite people. So. I'm 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 thrilled, and um, so they started this event this year where he he formed the band and he got Ella Henderson and Robert Plant as guests, mm -hmm. and uh, I got in to play as well. And there's an auction for this new cure for cancer because Andy Taylor has been suffering stage four prostate cancer, mm -hmm. and um, they gave him I think like three weeks to live and then, then this new doctor showed up with this new therapy and now andy is in remission okay and like the guy pretty much invented the cure for cancer and i think it's the best possible cause to play for for that so when i heard what this thing was about i just said ah, you can count me in absolutely whatever it takes i'll do it because i had a i have a bad cancer history in my family and I want to be a part of that. I want to know more. And then on top of that, bam, there's Robert Plant. I mean, yeah. who's going to say no to that? Yeah. And he, he sang Stairway to Heaven after a million years without singing that one, right? That, that must have been a special occasion for sure. Yeah. I can tell you, I was there when he sang Stairway to Heaven, Black Dog, and Thank You for the first time in almost 20 years. And he, he held lyrics and he was reading lyrics to Stairway to Heaven because he he forgot. Wow. And then <laughs> then I have a video where I sing Stairway with him. He said, you know, I'm not comfortable singing this high anymore. You know, I, I didn't do Zeppelin stuff for a long time. Mm -hmm. And he said, can you help me out? And I said, Jesus Christ, yes, of course I can. <laughs> so then I, sang question, that, that yeah. part. then I sang that part, full voice. He was like, Mother, motherfucker <laughs> and then he said no he's like let's let's do me one line you one line then we tried that and then he said you know what let's break it down to an acoustic part i'm gonna sing it an octave lower you go above me and then this girl is gonna sing actual melody so there's a video i might actually post it soon where we tried that song for the first time on rehearsal it was surreal oh, wow. it was it was really yeah. surreal so Please, please post it, man. I'd, I'd love to see it. Yeah. 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 we Will do. Yeah. And well, I usually ask everyone I interview what advice you'd give for someone who's starting in this business. But in your case, I'll revert it. I mean, what kind of advice did you receive from guys like Robert Plant, David Coverdale, all other established artists like that? Well, they all see me as the guy that's going to carry the torch. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a blessing and kind of a curse. <laughs> because the world of music, yeah. Yeah. the world of music has changed yeah. and Led Zeppelin was huge and original back then 
But if if I showed up playing that kind of music, I, I would I would be a copy of that or a copy yeah. of White Snake. So yeah, I don't want to do it. I I want to reinvent something myself with the spirit of that, but not musically yeah. totally in that vein. Because there's a lot of modern stuff that I love, and it's 2023. It's it's time to yeah. move on. But keeping that old school spirit of Coverdale Plant, Paul Rogers, Dio, Joe and Turner. Yeah. I think I think that would be interesting. You know, mixing that up with some modern influences. I think that would be amazing. So Yeah, of course. Um yeah, yeah David has been just so genuine and nice to me and um I love that guy so much. He's 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 my all time favorite. <laughs> yeah, same here. Same here. Well, and back to yeah. the album, you have uh, Ivan Keller on guitars, Luca Roderick on bass, and Mario Lepogladek on drums. Uh, how did they come into play and form this band with you? Well, Ivan Keller was, he's hes hes going to enter my room and anytime soon because we got to finish the video for Acid Rain. Okay. Which is going to come out <laughs> okay. in a couple of days. Sure. Um, he's been playing with me for eight years now, mm -hmm. more than eight years, and he was in Animal Dry with me. And we are the core of everything that's going to happen with any band of mine. So it's mm -hmm. always me and him and then a rhythm section because mm -hmm. the rhythm section changed. This year we had a different bass player on one gig. On another gig we had a different drummer, but it was always me and him that stayed. So um, we'll see how the band progresses. Mario is incredible drummer, great singer, knows stuff and helps me out arranging stuff. Luca is the best bass player I, I've ever played with. And like, if this band stays what it, what it should be, it's going to be the best, the best thing, I guarantee. Okay. And I know that Ivan played on Mike Mangini's solo album, and uh, he told me you recommended him. Uh, was it mentioned yeah. to you at any point that, he, that Mike would be leaving Dream Theater or not? I mean, did you know or... So the thing is, um, I was actually involved on that album with Mike Mangini. Uh, okay. But I was also on Court with Frontiers, so mm -hmm. you, do, you do the math. Right, right. Anyways, I brought Ivan and I brought Tony as a bass player. They stayed on the album. Um, he never told me about that, mm -hmm. uh, about Dream Theater. And I, I also spoke to Jordan Rudis like a month ago. We had a long Zoom chat. Okay. He didn't mention he didn't mention anything. So oh wow, I know. <laughs> cool. I mean, it, yeah. I saw I saw I saw Portnoy last week, and I said, man, you're back in Dream Theater. He's like, yeah, that's what people want, you know. <laughs> right. I'm like, wow, that uh, I was expecting, like, wow. But yeah. um, I mean, Mike has done so much. Like, his legacy is just incomparable. I know, I know. As a fan, and I know you're a fan, I mean, we're excited about the news, but let's see what the future holds, right? We'll see about that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, back to the album once again. I mean, I love what you did with uh, Chaos Master and The Bitter End, where the first song expands into the next, and there's yeah. a callback on the lyrics. Uh, tell me about the idea yeah. of having those songs reference each other. It was supposed to be one song. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, yeah just, so Keller just came. A dime interview. Hey, <laughs> Oh, a pie, don't you? Yeah, let it, let it smoke for a couple sure. of minutes. Sure. Anyways, um, it was supposed to be called Chaos Master and the Bitter End. Okay. But then I thought this song is so beautiful. I want to keep it as a as a song, and I just cut one song in two, and you get two songs instead of one. Why not? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's a cool idea. Yeah. And, and uh, a proper way to end the album with the bitter end. I like how it ends. Uh, it's appropriate for to be the last song of the album for sure. Yeah. Agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you about the plans for Whitesnake. I mean, I guess playing live again depends on Coverdale's health uh, at this stage, but uh, he really, he recently mentioned the idea of doing one last album with everyone that was part of the band at some point. Uh, and I mean, how is the experience of being on stage with Coverdale and what are the current plans, if any? I have no clue what the plans are, to be honest with you. I okay. only talked to David for his, I, I spoke to him for his birthday and we spoke for my birthday mm. and we just, it's just love and light all the way through messages, but no words about Whitesnake moving on. Uh, okay. It was great to be on stage with him. I enjoyed every second. I was honored to support him on his last tour. What's going to happen in the future? God knows. I, God knows, because I don't. So, um, <laughs> right. I wasn't informed. He might call me. He might not. I don't know. I just, I'm, 
I'm happy and, and just fulfilled and satisfied enough that I was a part of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I was glad that you were part of it as well. I mean, I'm a longtime fan of Coverdale and also of your voice. I'm glad those two sides of it connected. But uh, yeah, we'll see what the future holds as well, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, probably not because you did tons of interviews, but we did an interview in 2020 uh, to promote uh, George, the, the album you did with George Lynch, uh, Dirty Shirley. With Joel, with Joel right? Yes. Yeah. For whatever Absolutely. reason, Skype messed up and that interview did not record. So I'm glad we're catching up now. Uh, and I should ask you about this. Are there any plans to work again with George or not? Um, Dirty Shirley has a new singer now. So okay. it's it's going to come out in 2024. Uh, I've, I'm not sure if I should have a desire to promote it because it, it has nothing <laughs> to do with me. And it's right. on Frontiers and finished court with them. Fair enough. But a friend of mine is a friend of mine is a new singer and a great, great, great singer. And I'm actually really looking forward to hearing Dirty Shirley number two. Okay. So that's all I can tell you. I'd Fair love enough. to work with George, but in a different in a different uh, circumstances and occasions than Fair this enough. one. Fair enough. Okay. And you are also part of uh, one of my favorite albums of last year, Michael Romeo's War of the Worlds Part Two. Uh, love was, it yeah was there ever a discussion about touring with michael and or collaborating more i mean i love that album um i actually i actually met uh jd who's a bass player for the record he plays also with black label society mm -hmm. we played grass pop weisnick and black label so i came to jd uh, to finally meet him and he said man we should tour this album we should yeah. get michael and to tour this album. And then we were supposed to play with Symphony X in, in June, but then uh, Storm came down and, and our gig was canceled. Symphony X played the other day. But I gotta I gotta I gotta talk to Romeo because Romeo and I are now label mates. We're both on Inside Out. And he yeah. already he told me about idea of War of the Worlds part three. So mm -hmm. that would be that would be interesting. Oh wow. Yeah. I, I love yeah. to do it. I love this yeah. second one. Yeah. Well, it's hard enough to see Symphony X on tour because they only tour every four or five years. But, you know, yeah. having him tour solo would be great. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It'd be amazing. Yeah. And also on the yeah. same album, we had uh, John McAluso on drums. And I know you're part of a project with him called Stone Leaders, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It, that, that was an album recorded almost 10 years ago. I was a different I singer back then. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but I also was supposed to be in a new formation of ARC. Oh, with Michael Luso. Then, right. Yeah. Then things fell. Then things fell off. Uh, but John and I are good now. Finally, did this record together, and mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, more will come. Yeah. Okay. Do you play "Box of Time" in your live shows by any chance? Because that's a great song. I don't. It's yeah. my favorite song, but I yeah. I don't. It's it's a great track. Yeah. It's a great track. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And well, as we approach the holiday season, the TSO shows are around the corner. Uh, how are you preparing for it? And uh, what's what's uh, the schedule so far? I'm not doing TSO. Uh, You're not? Because I'm, no, because oh, I'm, I'm yeah, well, TSO rehearsals are now, they're going to start the tour in five days. And I'm doing the voice of Croatia okay. as a judge. Okay. So I, I, I could only do one. So I, I, I took a break from... The U.S. tour this year, so I can do the voice properly. Hopefully, I'm back next year. We'll see if, if the schedule allows me. Because I'm telling you that the oh no, I told this to uh, uh, interview before you. Uh -huh. Yeah, my schedule for next year with with Jalusic is crazy. We're getting we're getting calls from everywhere. We're getting we got a call to tour South America. We'll see what happens. Wow. It's just so many things happening right now. Wow. Yeah, and yeah. well, I, I watched your audition on Junior Eurovision 20, 2003, I believe. Uh, you yeah. look so young yes. then. Uh, yeah, from that audition up to now, I mean, a lot has happened. Uh, tell me, how was the trajectory so far and how did you establish your identity as a singer? Because that's a tricky one to achieve, right? Well, it's not <laughs> tricky. It's it's impossible. I achieved <laughs> so many impossible things. Being a kid that sings pop and then becoming a grown-up and being accepted as a rock metal singer is mission impossible. I, I can't name one person that achieved that. So uh, it's hard work and dedication and just, yeah, it's, yeah. man, it, it, if I would tell you this whole story, it would take a lot more than what this interview can allow. Oh, I bet. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a long story, man. It's it's yeah. 20 years of, of just hard work and um, giving up on many things so I can do this. Probably. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. your career could have gone to a completely different direction. You could have become the new Justin Bieber or whatnot. Absolutely. Uh, maybe, yeah. a lot, yeah. maybe a lot more money, but I'm glad you are where you are right now. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. And well, I think your popularity has increased substantially in North America in recent years. Uh, do you have any plans to move to the U.S. to give your career yet another boost? I mean, that would change things uh, as well, right? It would. Mm -hmm. I got a I got an offer from Hollywood the other day, so we'll see how wow. that goes. The thing is, Jalusic is a Croatian-based band, and just right. um, yeah, that would it's, complicate uh, it, things. Yeah, yeah, it, it it it's tricky, man. It's it's. I love living here. I love working in America. Uh, it's just Croatia is a great place to live. A great yeah. food, great landscape, um, great uh, environment. Um, I don't know. I, I still haven't decided. But I feel like I belong in, in, in L.A. I just haven't decided yet if, if, if it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen like soon or not. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. And I know yep. that uh, you know after the soul, after the Jalusic album, uh, I know you have plans for future projects. Uh, maybe you can reveal, maybe not. I know there's something around the corner coming up. Can you give? I us know a you. I, I know you know because Joel knows. Yes, and Joel knows because Derek Sherinian told him. Yeah, he told me. As and well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. And we had a problem because of that, so I can't reveal anything. But since you know, yeah, yeah, I have something in the works with Derek Sherinian. Uh, the first teaser is going to come out in like a week. So okay. the first single is going to come out in January and the album is going to come out in March and we're going right. to tour Europe in May. So awesome. I, gave you, little, I gave you some details. I can't tell you anything more until Good it's stuff. really revealed. So it's, it's a great album. Yeah. And yeah. Good stuff. I have high hopes for that album. I heard one or two tracks, but let's leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, to finish off, to finish off, uh, what do you have plans in terms of touring uh, for the upcoming months, and where can we find updates about your career? Um, listen, I'm gonna put out all the dates on my um, website, dinojalusic.com or jalusic.com. Mm -hmm. You can follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Uh, regarding touring, we're gonna do a couple of dates in Croatia, um, and we're gonna do Slovenia with the Dead Daisies. We're gonna do Switzerland three dates and another date in Slovenia by the end of the year. Next year, I'm going to post all the dates. We have around 25 concerts already booked. Wow. We're playing a festival with Europe and Decapitated and um, Avantasia and so on. And uh, there's going to be some cool news regarding some touring stuff that I will do next year as well. Awesome, but I will, yeah. Long term, I'll, I will have Jalusic and this another thing that you heard is my okay. two bands. Okay. Good stuff, man. I'll look out for it. Uh, thank you so much for the interview. All the best with Follow the Blind and any thank other you. future endeavors. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate Cheers, it. Man. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.